welcome welcome to screen time continuum it is a wonderful wednesday and here we are coming to you live and direct it is myself and the fellas how you doing over there nick mike what's going on today guys happy wednesday i'm doing good i'm doing good Dijon looks a little bit different but i'm all right <laughs> yes indeed. looking he's I'm, I'm looking better all the time yeah, yeah. 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 better That's and better, better looking <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm doing all right. It's, a, it's been a good Wednesday. How are you oh. doing down there, Keelan? I can't complain. It is definitely a good Wednesday. Uh, I, I don't know why I feel the need to share. I had a really nice workout today. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that I mean, I work out pretty much every day. So it's not a thing, but Wednesday's humble workout brag. was different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Humble brag. But let's, let's be clear. <laughs> let's be clear about this humble brag. This is one of those... Uh, I'm not in better shape than you kind of a, oh, I work out. It's a, I remember growing up, they said you got to work out for 20 to 30 minutes a day to stay alive longer kind of workout. Mm. Hey, <laughs> 20, 30 minutes a day is better than nothing. That's for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, my heart's racing. My heart's, mm -hmm. I just catch my breath. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tap out. Uh, so yeah, definitely. It's a great Wednesday and we are here to review the movie god committee the god committee is a movie that is on netflix it is directed by austin stark it stars kelsey grammer julia stiles and janine garofalo uh, those are probably some of the bigger names uh dan hadaya and coleman domingo are the major players in this movie according to the uh casting information that is on wiki <laughs> but um overall i mean it's a really small cast i wouldn't say there's more than uh once again a movie with probably about 15 to 18 people in it uh if you include the extras and um i'm never really disappointed with that so uh before i ask for first impressions let me give you guys a little bit of a background also this movie came out about summer last year 2021 it is available on Netflix. I'm not sure if it's available anywhere else. I'm sure it's available like on YouTube, Prime, places you could buy uh, on-demand type of movies. But this movie is about an organ transplant committee that ends up with one hour to decide who is going to get a heart from uh, the donor list. And we see them go through a litany of information uh there's three per perspective uh recipients and um we actually begin with three recipients one passes and then we end up with another so we still have three recipients that they are going to go through and that is the basis of this movie that is a little bit of the twist that comes at the beginning so that's not really a anything major however if you are interested in this movie, if you have not seen this movie and you plan on seeing this movie and or if you simply don't want to hear us talk about it, you want to go and take a look at it first. Go ahead, head on over to Netflix or any of your on demand applications and purchase or rent the God Committee. Take a gander at it and then come right back over here and see what we have to say about the God Committee. However, if you are content listening to our interpretation of what the God Committee movie is and finding out what we will and will not say about it. Stay tuned. We're coming right for you right now. And yeah, you might want to wait until you hear our ratings to go purchase this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, for a purchase. I, would, I definitely would not uh, entice anyone to go run out and purchase anything until they know what they are in, getting into. So uh, I think that's that's a pretty decent breakdown of what this movie is oh i also want to add that this movie um the source material for this movie is a play that goes by the same name the god committee um and that play let me make sure i get this right i want to say it came out in 2006 yes 2006 this movie came i mean excuse me the play was out um I don't remember if it was on or off Broadway. I believe it was an off Broadway show. However, there was a line in this movie that uh, the guy who wrote the movie, his name is 
St. Germain is his last name. I don't see his first. Mark St. Germain. Mark St. Germain. Mark St. Germain made a statement or a quote in one of his interviews about the play, and it was used in the movie. And that quote was, I became interested in transplants when a friend's father found himself in need of one. Uh, with the desperate, sh or excuse me, similar, but with the desperate shortage of organs, I wondered how the selection process worked out and how difficult these decisions must be. The more I learned, the more I realized that every doctor selection meeting was its own drama. Uh, it was a drama of its own where final decisions could not possibly be made entirely on science, facts, and or figures. And that is what uh, spurred him into writing this movie. I actually realized, I don't think Maybe it was derived. <laughs> there was a statement derived from that. But that is pretty much the introduction into this movie. That is the basis of this movie, the source material, and a statement made by the creator of the source material. With me saying all of that and mentioning a couple of the actors, I am going to defer to you gentlemen and ask, what do you think? What are your first impressions? Hmm. Do you want to go first, Mike, or do you want me to? Uh, I can go first. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, if I could wrap it up in one word, it'd be meh. <laughs> you know, um, five. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, on, on closer look, it's, it's pretty ambitious because it's trying to tell, uh, two stories at once. Like it's trying to tell the story of this committee making this decision and then also tell a story much later on about um, Dr. Boxer, one of the doctors on the committee, and he, him basically trying to uh, level up his way out of committees ever existing mm -hmm. by finding a way to get animal transplants into humans, which um, even in real life is, is the goal. I think most recently I found an article about a pig heart um, being put into a human Mm -hmm. Of course, through genetic modification, and it's one of the, like the first trials of its time. Yeah. So it deals with like a pretty relevant stuff, I would say. But it falls, it it falls victim to its own ambition, because in trying to tell both of these narratives, um, you don't you end up not really caring about some of the characters that you think that would that where like certain twists come up, and you should care, but you. You don't just because you haven't spent enough time on screen with those characters. Mm -hmm. uh, from a visual standpoint, it's, it's pretty. They do a good job at separating the timelines with the use of cold and warm filters. Um, there's not a lot of music happening, which is kind of nice. It kind of pulls the attention to the drama. But that that ambition, oh, writing too, there's a few really good like lines in there. The editing is is pretty decent. Um, there's a few points that like stand out, but it just ends up falling flat on its story because it's trying to do too much with too little. And um, yeah, those were my initial impressions of it. Yeah, nice. Uh, okay, let's see. God committee, more like block committee, huh? Um, <laughs> hey, the opener. Yeah. yeah, that's my opener. Um, yeah, I would I would piggyback on everything that Mike said for sure. Um, it, to me, this movie is I see what it's trying to do. I know what it's trying to do, and it's trying to be interesting. And I think that it could have been interesting. But what's funny to me is that this is just a more modern version of the the trolley problem. Um, you know, so you're you're kind of just breaking down what the ultimate good is, the best good for the most amount of people, utilitarian sort of ideas. Um, but funny enough, it's I feel like even the trolley problem would probably be more interesting than this. I don't. And I think what Mike said is right, is we don't care enough about the characters for it right. to be impactful that they're making these decisions. Um, I think the critique about hospitals doing things for financial gain is an interesting one, but I think it's half hearted. I don't think that it's doing it. I think it's doing it kind of like one foot in one foot out like, hey, we're not trying to slander you guys, but sometimes you'll take money over, you know, ethics. Um, but I don't think that they did really punch that 
that point in to be like actually pointed. I think it was just kind of like a, I don't know, a, a kind of like a, a sly admission maybe of right. what the system actually is. Uh, yeah, the movie isn't that great in my opinion. The acting is so, so I like Julia styles. I don't like Kelsey Grammer all that much. I think that he's fine for what he does, but, then again, he's not really getting a lot to work with either. Like, there's no complexity to Boxer, I don't feel like. He's just like he's a curmudgeon. And, like, they, I, you don't get anywhere past the surface with him. And maybe that's the point. Maybe that it's because they're doctors and they have to be cold and calculating and you're not supposed to let anything get personal. But I don't know. Just don't end up feeling very much for the characters. So, first impressions, blah committee. Blah. Blah. <laughs> uh, no, definitely. I can agree with everything both of you said and add um, the parts of this movie I like were stunted by the parts of the movie that had no impact or emotion or anything else in the movie. And that happened so consistently that it's exactly like Mike said, the story kind of ended up falling flat. It, it was completed. There wasn't a lot of like plot holes or anything left uh, unfinished. Yeah. But um, the roller coaster that it, it was, was more Santa Monica Pier than Six Flags. And let's be honest, they took a lot of breaks during that one hour they had to decide somebody. That, oh my life. god, that was the longest <laughs> hour and a half. Yes, let, let me let me that let that be my impression. This movie is based on this committee having an hour and ten minutes exactly to make a decision. They spend about twenty five of those minutes not even in the room. Yeah, I think it's like yeah, they have like three breaks, like two ten mm -hmm. minutes. One, and then one, one of them was like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a <laughs> lunch. That's a whole lunch. <laughs> yeah. He had up all that time together. If I'm their corporate boss, I'm questioning uh, uh, what got accomplished. And don't mm -hmm. tell me, oh, you gave me a name and that's what got accomplished. No, no, no. Turn in your notes. <laughs> right. Turn in your notes. But um, that, and, and not, and again, being clear, because uh, these are first impressions. We have more we're going to discuss about this. That doesn't mean that it's like terrible. It, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. Um, but it's definitely. What I liked about this movie was it made me want more. What I disliked about That's this movie not... was. <laughs> it made you what... want more. It made me want more. <laughs> yeah. Um, if this movie were two and a half hours, I feel oh, like God. it would be. I know, I know, I know. But if it were, there would be a lot more that could have been done. Um, to comment on what you said, Mike, because uh, I, I, oh, you, you said it in your opening, and I'm, I was like, just sitting there, like, oh, glad that he agrees, because I have literally a bullet point about this. We know more about the doctors than we know about the patients that are receiving the transplant. Yeah. We know more about Pope, who we don't even meet until like the last 40 minutes of the movie than we know about any of the four total patients. Five, actually, if we include the guy who, uh, uh, six, if you include the last guy who also was uh, giving up his heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we know nothing about any of the patients. We only know about the doctors and that lends to what you were saying, Nick, for me, um, about that that whole hospital, you know, making decisions based on the money deal. I think they could have done so much more with that. Yeah. And and uh, and not just use it as this underlying crutch at the end as to why we have to make a certain decision. Like, oh, we get to help so many more people. And that's bullshit. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, it's the justification, right? Like, the, any... I mean, like, and that's what the movie is trying to do. It's trying to Justify. open the conversation about, like, what are the ethical steps in taking, you know, this decision? I mean, like, it's not an easy decision, obviously. I did think that there were shocking, maybe not shockingly, maybe the movie's trying to be shocking by adding these elements, but the level of non, like, sort of subjective opinions that were allowed into the equation of choosing people was a little bit weird to me 
Um, I don't know if that's just because that's what happens. Maybe people aren't a lot, you know, can't keep their subjectivity out of it. But together. <laughs> it, it just felt a little weird that they were, you know, kind of trash talking some of them. The negatives were that like, you know, right. I think one of the negatives was that they didn't have anybody around or something like that. Like, yeah, no support. system. He, right, right. Yeah. So, you know, like I, I get the idea, like you only have one organ. It's got to go to the best person. This is the utility you know, utilitarian argument. Where does the best, mm -hmm. where is the best, what's the best net good? Um, right. I think they could have done a better job at emphasizing that though, because it didn't really feel like they were making a strong enough point on anything, in my opinion. Felt mm -hmm. like they were just kind of like, they were pussyfooting yeah. around an idea, but without, without doing it too, too hard because they didn't want to piss off somebody. You know what well, I mean? Like, right. And, and, so here's here's what I kind of caught. And and with this, I'm going to jump into the beginning and then we're going to get to uh, try at least to get up to trip. Right. Just so we once we understand the beginning, the rest of it kind of falls in place. Um, there at some point in this movie before we are in, which from the beginning, we're pretty much introduced to trip. Right. But before we get the gist of what's going on with uh, the trip character. I feel like we were going to get exactly what you just mentioned. Like we were going to get some really in-depth uh, medical background type of uh, uh, dialogue and script. And then it shifted. And I promise you on my first intermission, not their first intermission, but the first time I paused it, um, I just had to look it up. And that's when I found out about the source material and it's originally being a play. And what I believe is this movie is written by someone who appreciated a one room, one stage play. Mm -hmm. And this is their rendition of how it could have gone in this way. But once again, this does the exact opposite to me than, um, I forget the movie we just watched. Circle. Uh, is that what it was called? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yep. But yeah, well, or you mean the last movie you just watched? No, the tick, one tick, about boom? the Tick Tick Boom. Thank you. No. Tick Tick Boom. It it gives me the exact opposite of what Tick Tick Boom gave me. Whereas Tick Tick Boom was blending that stage play cinematic feel where uh with it being a musical, it wasn't so uh like oh, we're going from dialogue to the play, from play to dialogue, from the you know, we're playing on these things. This movie gave me those things, all of those unfinished, uncut, like if this were a wooden box, the corners weren't sanded down or, or you know what I'm saying? The, the ends weren't sanded and made smoother. This was still pretty rough on the uh, finish. Mm -hmm. And that's what this movie gave me from that end of it. And I think that's where uh, with the the how they kept trying, they would try to go different ways. They would try to make these virtuous statements and all of these things. It just that's what kept reminding me. The dialogue especially kept reminding me of a play. It just consistently I kept remembering Ah, uh, right. This is a play. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, I think it would have done itself a good service if it was just all in that one room. Yeah, and, like you didn't you didn't figure out anything about the future, but you just yeah. kind of like the beginning is the beginning, and then you get yourself into that committee room, and then you explore that whole committee, yeah. um, and you explore the whole decision that has to be made in that day, and then maybe in the end you follow uh, the person who gets the heart. And then you can end it there, and the the eventual end that that sets up that would have been perfect. But yeah. this jumping back and forth, it doesn't it's current modern time, yeah, yeah, it doesn't allow enough room for the characters to breathe for anything to for any of those impactful statements or any of those virtue sig uh, virtue signals, any of those virtues to come out of the character, or even to explore the morality of um, how this heart or how the decision of the heart gets made. Like I was thinking like similar to like um, a jury room, right? And there's movies like 12 Angry Men that explore that, but they, there's some like you stay in there, you stay in that moment mm -hmm. so that all that stuff becomes impactful and you don't right. leave it. You definitely yeah. don't take breaks. Right. And, uh, and to, to tack on to that, the decision ends up meaning nothing at the end anyway. Nothing at all. 
and 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 again, it literally means nothing. It like this is a really cynical movie, actually. In fact, because it what it makes you do is makes you sit in that fucking room, listening to them bloviate for an hour and a half, and then they just off the screen tell you, "Oh, he died anyway six months later." Well, not so. Like you do get the fact that the the program continues, right? Because there's like this yes, thing yes. hanging over the head of the committee of whether or not they can continue because mm-hmm. they've had nine heart failures mm-hmm. or like nine bodies reject the heart and so you you do get a little bit of that so you get taylor dr sounds taylor like they should have the been director. dissolved a long time ago oh yeah but <laughs> well, I think under, before boxer even got as far as he got yeah, yeah. but under that director maybe because like you, you explore those moral gray areas which is fine like in any big corporation or any big oh, yeah. there's a Janine uh, garofalo or excuse me a doctor she was not dr taylor hmm no, I forget her name. But then, uh, then Viv, really, not Vi, Viv, 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 Viv. But then, really, all of this movie is about is that the decision was profit based, and that the, yes. the even none of the patients mattered then because it wouldn't. Because in the end, they made a decision that didn't really impact. It just killed the people that we knew, and and Trip died anyways. Mm-hmm. I, well, I don't see, know. I, so, like, I get, I get that. Like, the 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 bigger overall picture is the corruption and maybe you know, like, the taking of the money, kind of advancing science. Mm-hmm. But I know, man, no, I, I make us sit through that whole decision. Why didn't you just say that we were going to do that and then have so, the movie be about the search for that science? <laughs> well, so, so like that investor though, they each personally knew that investor, or at least one of them did. Mm-hmm. So Box. there's a there's a little bit of like where corruption isn't always so black and white. How it creeps in through um, personal interactions with mm-hmm. somebody and getting and knowing somebody, and so there's a little bit of that. But again, it's not so well stated. Like you see that investor uh, in the 2014 segments for like what 10, 20 seconds at most. Of screen time, they he's he plays much more of a character in like the future or the present time. Yeah. Um, I feel not, I still think it's a cynical attitude though, to be honest, because it's like the, the movie even justifies itself at the end with Jenny Gridofalo saying that the rock of are not the, the Carnegie's, you know, like basically mm-hmm. had slave labor and uh, you know, now there. they're doing great and now they actually give back to the world. It's just like, this is a, such my a favorite. cynical fucking outlook. My favorite <laughs> one was Henry Ford beat back <laughs> union workers Man. with a baseball bat. Yeah, listen, I want to say something. I have a, I have a statement that but now I he runs a foundation. <laughs> right. But wait, now really quick. I have to say this though. I have a statement I make about Henry Ford once in a while that um, everybody has not heard. And I don't, I'm going to say it now. I don't care. Uh, find out Henry Ford apparently helped or invented with his committee the five day work week. Yeah, five eights. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think too he was also a big inspiration to like Hitler. So oh, yeah. you get both of these things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you get this just, very strange. If if they look up that one thing I just said, all of that kind of comes up. Yeah, well, if you, if, yeah. If you look up, if you look up the people who were in power during those times, you might find out that their interests weren't in, exactly in just one spot. Right. They, anything that was profitable, and and yeah. listen, that's just what it comes down to. Um, mm-hmm. But really quick, Nick, you mentioned the point of this movie, and I actually figured that out. That might be the only. Yes, okay. that might be the only thing. Of why I say I want it more. Like, why, why that was my statement? Like, and eh, what I liked is I wanted more. What I dislike, I wanted more. And so, remember the statement that's made at the very beginning and the end of this movie by the young man who is the original heart donor, a 17 year old young man from Buffalo, New York, who's hit by a hit and run driver off his bicycle after he leaves his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Well, now remember, they have a dialogue at the beginning of the movie. Right. Just to do it. Right. As we're running through credits. But we that's think the it's point just of the to movie. do it. <laughs> no, no, right, because we think it's just to do it, but once they did it again, because they he makes they run through that exact same dialogue at the mm-hmm. end, and at first I'm like, why are we're not even showing them again? What the fuck? What are we doing? Then for some reason, after I thought about it, I thought about the movie in total. It makes sense. So watch this. This dialogue that they have essentially is talking about the nearest galaxy, which is Canis Dwarf. It's 900 million years away with our current technology, 25,000 years away. Um, if we could move at the speed of light, which means that it's possible to get there, even if you don't see it happen in your lifetime, 
And the point of doing it is to find out what the fuck the point is. Now, we get to the movie, and we know that I'll just jump to the end, and then we'll do the whole, you know, as we're talking through it. We know at the end, uh, Dr. Boxer does not actually see his ex organs work. Dr. Boxer does not see the committee come to an end, but everything that he did in his 10 years there, everything that he did in that last meeting with uh, Julius Stiles' character name is Dr. Taylor and everybody else comes full circle six, seven years later when, you know, his main investor, he saved his son. So he ended up getting his money. He's still in business, but he doesn't get to see the fruition of his work. And we see Dr. Taylor and Dr. Pope bringing his work to life at the end of the movie. So uh, see, you misunderstand me when I say I don't get it. I mean, I don't like it. Oh, no, I know you don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I know you don't I'll like just it. just make you explain the whole thing to me and be like, no, no, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, but but yeah, so that's when I, I was like, oh, shit, that was the no, point yeah. of the movie. Like, you don't, everything you work for, you won't necessarily be a part of. Yeah, whose who's, mm-hmm. who's shade we shall never sit in, right? Wise, what? Wise, civilization grows wise when, when men plant trees, they know whose shade they'll never sit in. It's just what do you, you know, it's that, it is. you gotta write. You gotta write your sources. Down. I, that's a I that's read. a that's a quote. Long quote. I heard it from a Ricky Gervais podcast back in like 2010. <laughs> Ricky Gervais. With, with Carl, <laughs> yeah, with Carl Pilkington. It was great. That's uh, great. I missed those podcasts. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Like, yeah, the advancement of science. The you know, and that's the whole reason they take the 25 million. I, I get that. Um, mm-hmm. I just also think that it's like, do <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's a cynical look at the world. It's not untrue, I don't think. I, I think that it is true, but I also think to myself, what the fuck are all these people doing with their money then? I don't the, I wouldn't <laughs> like, I wouldn't quite call building it building rocket ships to Mars. I wouldn't quite ships. call it cynical though. I, I, it's more realistic than cynical, I feel like. Yeah, like, I think I feel like I because the movie ends up being really predictable, but the like there's no like there's nothing unpredictable that happens that happens in like a negative nature like all all of the characters have very logical motivations that fit in with the real world and like yeah people in high pie and high paying positions that have to make a difficult or uh, decision for a whole organization may take money over something that's a bit more sentimental that just tends to happen like so that's where like i think in a when i'm being real optimistic about life and like think everything's good then i would cast it as cynical but if i sit back and think think about it for a second then it feels just more realistic than any you know, cynical and realistic aren't aren't mutually exclusive i mean i just think that it's cynical it's a it's a kind of a cynical and anti-cathartic uh theme and that's that's really what it comes down to me is anti catharsis. Like I, I know when when intellectual movies are are intellectual because they love <laughs> anti catharsis. I don't as a moviegoer, I don't like anti catharsis. I don't. I, I think that it it doesn't sit right with me. But that's just but me. That's my flavor. I don't know. Isn't there some catharsis with boxers research working out though? Like I actually didn't mind oh, boxer was... as a character because he's a bit more He's stoic, like he's a bit of an asshole, but uh, yeah, I never seen Kelsey Grammer play an asshole. I thought he did a decent job with it, and he didn't like. You can't expect uh, someone who was like ill raised. So he didn't. He talks about his father in like one or two lines. His father not being around. You can't expect him to be a good father when his father wasn't around. That's like, it's a very hard expectation to make of somebody. And especially with someone like it's a like, movie, so we can do whatever we driven. want. This is fantasy. I'm about to say, it's a grown ass <laughs> man. He can put it in the no effort. We can yeah, do but you <laughs> yeah, but they're still trying to be a bit more again, like realistic. He was born a great surgeon, character. but not a great man. What? Yeah, those are a lot of people. <laughs> that gets real You're realistic. Right. No, you are correct. You know, there's a power um, I'm thinking of right now. But his gift ends up being this research to the entire to the world. So in a way, and his. So let's his, see a kid get a pig heart, at the end. That's the catharsis, right? And, well, yeah, the heart that beat. Kid? That was a child. Yeah. We got to care about something in this movie. It doesn't have to. What be is the so point of grand. a movie that there's nothing that you can you care about? 
Again, why now, do you make a movie I, that I you don't about, care about? I, 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 didn't I don't care, care about any of these people. I didn't Again, care it's, it's, that we had to see Julia Stiles wake up in a bed laying next to Kelsey Grammer as if they just did. <laughs> Yeah, if yeah. it didn't have a child in this movie later, I was like, <laughs> first off, that kid don't even look like Kelsey Grammer. It, did he have some developmental issues? The child were they going, or the, were they the going the Jonathan Lipnicki route? I think, yeah, I think they were going in, like the Lipnicki and Jerry route, because he looked a lot like him. He looks <laughs> like a chubby older version of him. Mm. But it's the problem that this movie runs into: telling two stories at once, and not really fully developing either of them. Agree. Mm-hmm. Agree. I think if they had have kept the uh, 2014 stuff, did all of that run through, gave us the last 20 minutes of whatever they wanted to throw at us from 2021, it would have been uh, received differently. No, or they, you can even make it like a. This would probably work real well. Or he was well 2021 TV first. show. Like make this yeah. a TV or show. A limited series for sure. Whole first season, you focus on 2014. Whole second season, 2021. And then maybe near the end of the second season, tie it back together. Or you can have it through the third season. And there you I go. Like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that actually, that would make this a much better script alone, just breaking it up. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that it, if, but you would have to make this. Breaking it into acts. Oh, wow. We're turning it into a play. <laughs> back into a play. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, the, yeah. I, I agree that the skeleton of this movie is decent, but I don't even think that the conversations were that good in the deliberation. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I don't think they were forced to have to. Uh, okay, listen. I think let me the, be very clear. Yeah. Julia Stiles, Kelsey Grammer, two actors that I know for sure can do dialogue well and can do energy well, and they had to do neither in this movie. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they were given a lot. That's no, the thing. No, is I, that that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm agreeing with that. Like they, yeah. The script isn't like, I don't know. It it all felt very subdued, and maybe that's the point. It's supposed to feel sterile, and you know, like this is just a, a death panel because that's what this is. They call it a god they, committee, but another word for that panel. is death panel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, like I, I don't know. Like it, I felt like there could have been a little bit more passion in the arguments, maybe. Maybe that's what I was looking for. Uh, but you run it so much by the date, like maybe from Julia Stiles, because that's her first day. Right. Yeah. Like, like that's an interesting arc to see her on her first day, and then in 2021 to see her like kind of cold and staring on. Yeah, the cold filter, you know, the medium shot, and all that stuff works. And then her just being simply like, no, mm-hmm. like not even diving into it. So that's an interest, somewhat interesting. Almost not even paying attention. Yeah, but like the when it when it like but then like they cleaned the house day to day. in 2014 just to become the people at, in 2021 this is the cynicism that i'm talking about but you have like, to there be was no when making these sorts of decisions but, but you don't have to become the bureaucrat that you weren't at the beginning you know what i mean like she just became the bureaucrat that doesn't care you just yeah we just said that she just said no and then was staring off in the distance she's become the thing that she was at least trying to fight off in the first uh, first thing. Right. So, yeah. I mean, like, that's that we're back at the anti-catharsis thing. It's like, why do uh, I root she for Also, any though, later through the movie, she cares enough to travel around the world to try to get Boxer the heart and operate, too. And you see, it's like, slights of her caring about her, at least about her job. I don't know if it's, mm-hmm. like, it makes more that she cares about the person with Boxer, but about her job when she's going down to surgery to check on the team or something. And they're arguing, and she tells them to all oh, to shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And she like kind of lays out her lines, and uh, like so you see a bit of that. So there's there's still like she becomes a better version of the director that's in 2014, mm-hmm. and which is why her like she has this internal conflict with running math in the middle of the night in the in that bar because she feels herself becoming cold and she's trying to figure out how much is a day of life worth. Right. And uh-huh. so she she tries to fight that back. And then you finish it at the end of the movie with her hugging her kid, mm-hmm. where she tries to, like, embrace the the value of a human life, I guess. So, like, it's not super anti-cathartic, but it's so subdued that you don't really notice it. Yeah. Because you don't spend enough time in that timeline to care. Uh-huh. Yeah. This, you know what? 
term limits fixes all of this. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe no, you know, maybe you can't be on the death panel for more than a couple of years. years. You yeah. know? I, I, I just call it a five, six year cap. The, yeah. the thing is how they were making it seem like it kills you on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, AI fixes all of this. Just have some algorithms. <laughs> Bitcoin fixes. But I will this. say, Bitcoin might fix it. No. Um, who has a large like, Bitcoin I, wallet? That's, that's who yeah. wins the fucking heart. That's right. uh, we have to find it first, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> now it's the future. We've all switched. Come on. We've all switched we from uh, from wallets to Bitcoin wallets. That oh, you we're, not, we're not using Ethereum no more. your skin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethereum and Sterling. Oh, you got to go to those secondary hospitals. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Never mind. I'm going to break that yeah. Bitcoin out and go into this Kaiser. <laughs> have you, have you ever been to an Kaiser East takes hospital? Ethereum. <laughs> Kaiser takes Ethereum? Oh, no. Where I got to go to use this Bitcoin? Hold on. Where can I go with this Doge? Let me in. It's not like little company Doge is, Mary. Doge is the clinic on the corner, man. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty affordable. I know yeah. a guy in the back alley that takes Doge. Right. There you go. No, I think that's Sheev <laughs> right now. Sheev is like the dirty <laughs> back alley doctor. <laughs> oh my gosh. Never go to urgent care with We're creating guys. a fun future for ourselves. And, and on <laughs> Earth. Yeah. As long as I'm in charge of something, I'm down. Yeah. Um, but I will say, Mike, I, I, I see how you viewed her hugging her kid. I viewed her hugging her kid as this weird lost sense of love for Boxer um and this yearning for whatever it was that they were trying to have because she wanted something out of what they had he was just hidden yeah you know what i mean yeah. but she wanted something out of that and then ended up with a child um and then you know wanting oh we'll just meet him once and he can at least say he met his dad bro i'm not telling him i'm his dad like yeah how well, would he yeah. tell people he met his dad when i'm not about to tell him that i'm his father Mm -hmm. um so yeah i think there was some weird because even like through the uh 2014 meetings you could still see she had some feelings for him and of course at that moment it seemed natural because we just saw them wake up together but i think it gets deeper than that when you uh when we reflect on what we've been talking about already with them supposed to be doctors so they're cold and calculating and then you have a defense attorney in a room a, a preacher who used to be a defense attorney and then you have the psychologist so you're in a room full of cold calculating people wouldn't have the relationship been better if it was just professional i believe so i, I mean, think uh, much more interesting is movie. there anything i'm just asking because i don't remember i don't necessarily remember. was there anything that added to the story because they were sleeping together no, nope. like, it just was the explanation behind her having his kid later, which didn't even yeah. really need to happen. No, there's um, so it explores Boxer's character a little bit because you have this thing where Trip's girlfriend is talking to Dr. Taylor about um, like what happened, and yeah. at the end, she goes, um, she goes, uh, he loved me, he just had a fucked up way of showing it. Then we instantly cut to boxer showing up to taylor's to see hunter the kid and when you cut like that you're cutting for uh continent right. kind of, i forgot the other word not continuity congruency congruency yeah so you're cutting for that reason so that you link these two ideas together so he's supposed to love her but he can't express it in any sort of normal way so that's the that's supposed to make him a bit more human rather than this uh cold logical doctor who's like Murder. uh we can't we can't give it to to the to the fat ass who committed suicide we can't give it to this drug user let's give it to the person who doesn't even want the heart <laughs> but wouldn't showing the human side of him be negated by the fact that he took the money anyways i mean like yeah. we're not learning anything about him he took the cold calculated decision but no, he, to make he, money. Had, well, he is his hands well, were tied in that decision because he's starting right. up this bit he's trying to think of the greater good of replacing the committee all together well and not just the the getting the money for his business he, you got to also remember that uh geez i don't remember her name right now but the nurse um she had pros that had laid out on the table that with that 25 million they would mm -hmm. be able to help what uh what did she say a uh, hundred more walter curtis's 
Yeah, yeah no, I know that the money would have gone to save more people. But, but I'm, I'm saying, saying that, his, but I, really my point was her more than he had led. No, my uh, point was yeah. why humanize him if he makes the robot decision anyways? Because you're that's the job of, of humanizing him. You're supposed to either like maybe not relate to him exactly, but still care that he dies at the end. It, it just doesn't do that great of a job of expressing those points. I did not care that he died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I care more about. So, who are they putting this heart into? What's going on? Oh, snap. That's Dr. Taylor. Oh, snap. That's Dr. Pope. Why, Dr. Pope? Oh, snap. So, they both know what they're doing. Who taught her to do this? And she was <laughs> a surgeon, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm yeah. assuming everybody knows genetic sequencing. But, um, <laughs> was she Wait, you don't do that in your thing? free time? Yeah. <laughs> What can I say? Genome you know, sequencing. Yeah. I I thought I was just supposed to learn how to code computers, not humans. Just the same letters over and over again, man. Just <laughs> type them into the computer, see what comes up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Wait, yeah. Imagine what we could do once we had, like once genetic printers become like a household commodity. Everybody just creates these crazy mutants by you know, typing. Oh, and Darwin's going to take over real that's the, fast. That's yeah. when the new, the new pat, the new favorite pastime will be running your arm through a bandsaw and then regrowing it. <laughs> That'll be the bandsaw that, challenge, right? Bandsaw the challenge. Next, whatever the next TikTok is. Now that's a bachelor party right there. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey, it'll make it real easy to get rid of those tattoos you don't want. There you go. Yeah. Why not? Just well, actually, I'm not sure how that will work because if it's genetic, re if it's not resequencing, because that's what it would have to do to remove the tattoos, is just going to be printing out a copy of what you already put in there. Oh no, so, you just saw off the that tattoos skin. already in there, sir. You saw off that skin, grow, print out some new skin, slap that baby on, mm -hmm. and you're good like to a go. Sticker. See, yeah. you already, you already <laughs> proven that you got to peel the adhesive <laughs> off of it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was just about to give you guys a compliment. Like, you know what? You guys are already proven smarter than me. This, you know, like a sticker. You just a sticker. Yeah. I don't know. What is it? Like a sticker after like two days, or a sticker after two weeks? No, no. it's like it's like one of those really good stickers. Oh, so it's not know? a bumper sticker. It's a yeah, it depends. Yeah. sticker. It depends. But you got to make sure you, you scrape it first because you get the bubbles underneath. <laughs> got to get. Them. It's gonna be gross. Gonna... <laughs> oh, this is great. Golden. Um. I don't even remember where we were in this movie. That was just too goat. Uh, so yeah, even since somewhere in everywhere in this movie. Yeah, we, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've definitely jumped around, but this movie jumps mm -hmm. around. I want to say uh, we're only consistent for about the first. I think I wrote it down. Yep, here we go. <laughs> around minute forty-one, maybe a little bit before, because that's when I thought to write it down. So yeah, a little maybe even a little bit before that, we're already in 2021. So this movie jumps around over half the time. Mm. Uh, well, no, that's about half the time. That's about half the time. Mm. So, you know, uh, something I've noticed about the 2021 situation, right? Dr. Taylor takes over the committee. Um, Janine Garofalo's character, I really just can't remember her name. Uh, but she's disbanded, disbarred, whatever you want to call it. She's out. Uh, Father Dunbar is in charge. Mm -hmm. What is his, like, what? He's not a doctor. He was hooked up by the mobster. I mean, I understand how and why he was like, I get that, but. He's a lawyer, though, and a priest. So right. he has that sort of, like, ethical also. thing. Oh, yeah, no, see, I, listen. He also really? manipulated evidence. Yes, so he, I'm like, he's, a, he's a lawyer he's a that can operate mob lawyer. in that. Yeah, he can operate in that gray area should things start to go he's sideways in the hospital. He definitely said that, too, that he specializes in the gray areas. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I, I was just wondering, like, how do you go from being a 15-year defense attorney to becoming a priest? And why does it? Well, because that's the I think he was with this. I think he was the best act in, in this movie, to be honest. I think he did the best. I'm, he did the best kind of like conveying a certain level of <clears throat> a certain level of coercion in that conversation when he finally comes to the committee. I think that was pretty good. It was pretty convincing, at least for me. I definitely wanted to explore his character uh, a little, a more. bit more, a yeah. bit more for sure. Um, but no, he became a priest to stay out of jail. Right. So his whole defense was that he found God and that he's a changed person. 
Yeah, sure. And then that gets brought up into question. That works. Well. <laughs> that works every time. Hey, in, in movie land, yeah. <laughs> right, every yeah. Time. I found God. I found Jesus. Don't forget to there's, like, us. <laughs> there's like this little bit of question. Like another one of these things they don't explore is talking about God. This boxer right. is like very much, I don't know if he's an atheist, but like just anti god anything mm-hmm. like he even has yeah. um, a funny line where he's like i'll step aside when god walks in this room and votes mm-hmm. right when god walks in that room and votes i'll step aside gladly but in the last 10 years oh. he hasn't done so yet i was gonna bring something up this is one thing that i wrote because it was starting to bug me and <laughs> it's kind of not really about this movie but about these types of movies in general i realized that when a serial killer slashes somebody's throat and stabs them, it's gore. But when a doctor rips somebody's heart out from their sternum and shows everything, that's not considered gore. Nope. And it's no, really education. weird. That's <laughs> considered it's cinema. <laughs> it's it's so, same, like it's if so weird, you, though. If you it's go so on weird. YouTube, you can't find real videos of real murders or you can't find right. stuff films mm-hmm. or any sort of like that anymore. Yeah. Well, you maybe you could find some extreme gore, but if like, but it's all made up. But you can look up surgical videos, right? And you can actually watch surgeries happening because they're educational and get the same level of satisfaction. Education. Probably still has I'm, the I'm same a, psychological effect as viewing gore. So I don't yeah, know what we're doing blood, here. Blood everywhere. I'm pretty sure you get the same level of. I was telling my wife, I'm like, you don't even see this in Dexter. You don't see somebody. You don't see a heart getting ripped out of somebody in Dexter. Like now, do you think they I, actually did those that. surgeries? No, no of, course <laughs> not. of course not. But I mean, you know, like the, the considerations, usually they don't have gore on. Like there was no, uh, you know, disclaimer at the beginning sure. of this movie for gore. And I, and I saw more graphic things than I've ever seen in any horror movie. So, just, fair. Just mm. a thought. Just a thought. Just oh. never seen somebody get <laughs> cut open and have their heart taken out. It's, it's not many <laughs> drama thrillers that are uh, not going to tell you that they have blood and, and these type of things in it. So, Nick definitely makes a point. Well, I, I just think it's it's an interesting discrepancy that we kind of accept because. I was jeering just as much as if I was watching a Saw movie as oh, wow. I did when. Well, I mean, it's still somebody getting cut open and somebody's heart sure. being taken out. Like, I don't see that there's any difference. <laughs> it's just I mean, it, it education me the same aside, way. I don't there's, think there's there's clamps. It affects me the same way. My eyes huh? are still there's doing clamps. It. <laughs> yes, there's clamps. They go in with some there's super clamps. glue and they just, you know, <laughs> they, they patch your tubes up. I don't know what. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he was a bike a kit, off. a bike tire. Like, did you see those investors at the end when they're like they're doing the yeah. surgery and they're yeah, yeah. that one lady in the back's like <laughs> rubber neck? And she starts to like lick her lip. She's like, mm-hmm. like, like you know what, what are you looking at? All the money. <laughs> <laughs> you promised us a lot of money. <laughs> what? I put a pig heart into a baboon, baby. <laughs> so much money. <laughs> and so what and what did you guys think about boxer not wanting to take the heart because he knew that uh he would not make the list so he i think did, it's he fine a black market heart I, I i don't think it was because of the black market heart thing i think it was because he was so fucking stringent about his choices mm-hmm. i think he was actually being principled i would say i think you so know as well. like he wouldn't choose him right you mm-hmm. know so why I mean, would he nominate him? So and he learned to from making that having to be uh, having his hands tied in 2014. Like he just didn't want to go through that whole process again or feel like he would betray his morals again just well, to um, just to get a heart. Right. I think in 2014, he also knew already that he had heart complications. Um, we see the one scene where he's on the roof and he's chewing the gum and then he mm-hmm. Spits it out halfway through, just gets a good flavor off of it, puts it back in the wrapper delicately and puts it there on top of the ashtray. And we see cigarette butts and we see a bunch of gum wrappers that are clearly full of gum. The next time we see him on the roof, he smokes a cigarette instead. And then the next time we see him, um, he has the uh, 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 
oxygen tank when he's smoking a cigarette the next time he smokes a cigarette. Well, Julia Stiles says you've known for your whole and then stops. Yeah. Never or who knows, that. but yeah. he's known for some time. Oh, uh, yeah. Quite a while. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think that also, like, you know, you then look at the character and you're like, that plays into his cold demeanor. That plays into uh, the smoking of the cigarette. So it's like he really had no concern for his own life. He knew he was going to be gone at some point, and he was pretty much just welcoming death until he realized he had a breakthrough. And that's when all of a sudden life mattered, and oh, I got to do these important things, and you know. You no, know, too. That investor was like, "I didn't. I'm not paying for your team. I'm invest. I'm not investing in if your I die, team. You pay for my team. What are we? Doing? Uh, yeah, I'm investing in you. So mm -hmm. you have to live all because right. you're the guy." And he's like, "Fucking, can somebody just let me die in peace?" <laughs> I just, I just he also sit wasn't here. willing to give up his work because he didn't want to name his successor. Right. Yeah, that's so the like, that that happens quite a lot in mm -hmm. uh, multiple fields. But that's just, you know, you're gonna die and then lose something. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to let go of your work sometimes, man. No, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Hey, listen, I, I've I have definitely heard adages of you can put a million dollars in front of someone, but if you give it to them, they don't necessarily want it. If you make them climb a mountain for it, or you make them at least climb to the top of the stairs, they'll appreciate it more. Um, How about, <laughs> I'll give you a high five for it. You know what I mean? Like, just <laughs> it's weird, but you know, you make people just work even the smallest amount for something they appreciate. Ain't climbing no damn mountains, <laughs> oh, oh, mountains. You know, Billy Goat. Jeez. He smoked a, he smoked a, he smoked marble regs. He's quite the the he pragmatist, and he he pulls them out and he smells it like like. <laughs> not a good, like it's a, a fine marble. cohiba. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he still does it. So he's a pragmatist. He still appreciates yeah. the smell of like cheap tobacco. <laughs> really he cheap. Yeah. Like that made me like his character a bit because he just doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit about so much of the fancy things, even though he surrounds himself with fancy yeah. things. Yeah. Mm. Simple man, simple things. And, and uh, simple, simple character, too, unfortunately. Rooftops simple. getting a very nice uh, shout out in that movie. I love me a good rooftop. Agreed. Agreed. And, and I've never been to the uh, New York City, but I've heard that their rooftops are immaculate. Well, he's, he's got a freaking bird shit. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure, but I mean, just yeah. the views is what I'm saying. No, about. I'm sure. The views. Well, obviously, the views. Yeah. You gotta be up. You have to be up high for New York. It's New York City. It's all skyscrapers, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> yep. Look. Oh, be let's be very clear. My response was, "That's cool. Take a picture. I'm not going that high up on shit. What's wrong with y'all?" <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That high up, the wind blows a lot stiffer and it's a lot colder. I look mm. out the window. Matter of fact, I'm window. Window. what am I talking about? Why? <laughs> Don't quote me. All right. So, um, yeah. So, uh, do we have anything else? I was just going to ask, do you guys have anything else? I think we've gotten the majority of it. Um, short version of this movie for anyone who has not caught on yet. We begin this movie. We find a 17 year old. He's hit by a car. He becomes, he is an organ donor. His heart becomes up for debate. We meet Dr. Taylor. We meet Dr. Boxer. Uh, Dr. Lau, uh, Father Dunbar, and the other two characters that unfortunately I cannot There's remember some right now. A handful of bunch doctors. Of doctors, bunch yeah. of doctors, psychologists. Uh, right, yeah. a psychologist, Dr. Gilroy, and I'm gonna get that other character's name. Just give me. You're one. giving them and more thought than the movie did. Hey, Nurse Wilkes was at least kind of <laughs> funny. Um, and she continued so, on. She's still there in 2021. Yes, mm -hmm. she was. She did continue through. So. We meet the committee. This committee has to make a decision. A rich kid or, yeah, rich man's kid uh, ends up having a heart attack. He also needs a heart. At the end, they decide to give the heart to the kid who his father's going to donate $25 million, And that's what the committee has to do because that's what the board wants. We also find out that Dr. Taylor had a kid by Dr. Boxer. He doesn't want no parts of that kid. She feels away, but she doesn't. And at the end of it all, Dr. Boxer passed. Uh, seemingly, Dr. Taylor and Dr. Pope, who was his right-hand man, take over his uh, company. And um, hopefully there's not a God Committee too, because that means Dr. Taylor and Dr. Pope had a baby. <laughs> but here we are <laughs> at the end of our episode reviewing the God Committee. 
my final thoughts, I'll even go first on just final thoughts. My final thoughts on the God Committee. Uh, it was a really great attempt. It even made me curious to think like, hey, look, would I be able to do a good rendition of this? How would I run this through? Um, but overall, if I were to see it on stage somewhere, like if it's playing somewhere in one of my local somewhere close, I would probably see it. I would probably see it just to compare the two works. But outside of that, uh, this movie, I wouldn't have anyone per se like go sit with it long term. But uh, if you're interested in things that were turned from a play, I would like to know how you feel. So I would tell people to go watch it. And personally, if it were on and I walked into a room, I'm probably going to walk in and out of that room a few times because I'm not going to miss anything at all. <laughs> with that being yeah. said, um, guys, final impressions. Uh, let's just you get me? your ratings. Oh, let's oh, let's do that now, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> final I didn't, you know, I'm not even going to lie to you. Yeah, I'm not even going to lie to you. I didn't even think about my rating. I was just like, all right, so we're going to do impressions and we're done. Oh, no, that's right. We got a rate. And just so you guys know, I really forgot. So my rating for this, um, we're giving this out of 10. Yeah, no, it's going to have to get a 4.5. Okay. 4.5. Who's next? My next? Go if you want me to go. You can be the um, final rating. I'll go. I'll let you. I'll let you anchor. Um. So yeah, like, it's, it's, like I said, it's meh. Um, there the acting's okay. There's some like good little like one-liners in there that I enjoyed. Uh, visually, it's it's actually pretty. It's, it's a pretty movie. Um, but story-wise, it it tries to do too much and and falls flat. Uh, do it falls victim to its own ambition. Editing is is pretty decent. There's some good edits in there. Um, sound wise, is, is there's not much to hear. There's like you actually don't hear a song until the very end of the movie. I feel like um, if it's on, I mean it might just be on in the background, but I'm probably doing something else while it's happening. Like it came up on shuffle. Like you know how there's like a little watch something on, or like just play something on Netflix, and that's there. Um, but I wouldn't really go out of my way to watch it. But it's still a movie. Um, five out of ten for me. And it gets, uh, it gets a good shout out to the rooftop. The hospital <laughs> rooftop made it. Made it work. <laughs> that gave right. that gave you the solid five. Oh uh, yeah, that, that and um, the use of filters, like the cold filter to like show twenty twenty one, the warm filter to show twenty fourteen, and it's not really. I'm assuming that it's through like Dr. Taylor's view, like why you get those filters, but it mm -hmm. could just be Boxer's view as well. But he seems to be called up a character to really say that. It could have just been of artistic choice just to keep the things in line. But yeah, five out of ten. Yeah. Sweet. To add to what you just said, I, I also think the director did a pretty decent job. I'm not up in my rating, but I, I do think the director did very well. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Um, yeah. So this movie, I'm not going to say that it's terrible because it's not. We've seen some terrible movies. Um, so I won't be that mean. I just think that the story is underdeveloped. There's, there's an expectation for the audience to care about something that they're not given. And so... I kind of feel like it doesn't add up to what it particularly could or potentially could it be. I mean, I would be more interested in watching this as a play. If it was just a single room play, it might be more intriguing to me. Um, I think that injecting various elements of melodrama to what the core story was didn't do a whole lot for the story itself. Um, so I'm going to go... I'm thinking like four. I'm going to go four out of ten for this one. It's it's not my favorite, um, but it's certainly not. What are we at here? Um, it's certainly not. Let me go scroll down to my list. What's the worst movie we've ever done? Um, <laughs> it's not The Empty Man. It's not Reminiscence. It's not The Little Things. And, you know, so. Four. Please above those. Yeah, yeah. Be better than those for sure, but. 
no, I don't know. But uh, yeah. All right. So it gives us a 13.5 out of 30. What's that like a 4.7, 4.6? Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It looks like it's a 4.5. I'm just taking the four, the 4.5, and the five, and the median would be 4.5. Mm-hmm. I recommend that. 13 point. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so if you've seen everything on Netflix, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, not everything on Netflix. There is some shit, and apparently they're releasing like two new movies a week. Like, don't, don't do that. See, I like Amazon's model because <laughs> Amazon puts all of their C and B, C, and T, uh, D to uh, tier movies in like a playlist. Yes, so you can watch Llama Geddon. You can watch, I think there was like a cro- Crocodile Volcano movie. I think there was, there's some crazy shit. Hulu does the same thing where I you're love like, that oh, shit. this is where the shit movies are. All right, let's yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, if you're going to be it a bad movie, too. do it in earnest. I'm all for that. Like, come on. Um, some Sharknado. Sharknado, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. always down for schlocky, campy shit. So. Listen, Sharknado yeah. damn near won- wins an Oscar just because everybody knows <laughs> it exists. Right. <laughs> And they're up to like the ninth one now. So are they? There's oh my god, there's, still been, there's been so many of them. Yeah. So they did Sharknado did what Death Race only could imagine. Yeah. Damn Pretty much. you, Sharknado. <laughs> this classic. So good. Well, I'm gonna throw this nice uh what's this here? I'm gonna throw this nice uh outro uh, yeah. music. A little outro music and uh, Keelan can take us out. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, this has been the Guy Committee review. The Guy Committee, again, is a 2021 movie that is available on Netflix for you to view at your leisure or not. You just listen to us and we'll tell you how that really turned out um, when you get some time after you check out our episode about the guy committee or anything else over here on screen time continuum head over to the exo fathom that's available on facebook youtube and a bunch of other audio outlets am i correct yeah verbal we're on rumble we're on odyssey yeah yes indeed and that is hosted by yeah i love it you know why i love it because i don't even know what half of those apps are before you guys got there and once you guys got there i was like wait i gotta download like five new apps (laughs) (laughs) uh that show exo fathom is hosted by nick mike and ayla that comes on mondays at 8 p.m on tuesdays head on over to if numbers could talk follow that page on facebook and youtube as well that is hosted by myself also on Wednesdays, like today, Sundays, you know, that's coming up. Come back over here to Scream Time conti- Scream. Screen Time yeah. Continuum. That's only during October. Yeah, it's only Screen <laughs> Time <laughs> during October. Definitely go. come on over. Screen Time Continuum right here, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 8.30 p.m. Or who knows, 8.35. <laughs> we'll be here for you guys. <laughs> we appreciate you. For the Screen Time Continuum, my name is Keelan. I'm Nick. And I'm the mustard. (laughs) Good night. (laughs) It's called a callback.